What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again, and this new Destiny themed cookbook isn't the only hot thing in the most recent TWAB. So we have Solar Week or Solar Changes coming for the subclasses, but unfortunately it's not for all of them. But before we get into that, I don't know what the logistics of doing cooking stuff would be. But with this new Destiny cookbook, I kind of want to try some of them. I think that would be hella fun. Anyways, so a handful of the solar classes are getting some buffs along with a couple of minor nerfs. And while we can all very well lament the fact that not every solar subclass is getting looked at, I feel that as many of my longtime fans will know, for as much as we lambast Bungie here, and rightfully so, you also have to give credit when credit is due, and these solar class balance passes are generally pretty great with a couple of things that we want to keep an eye on. So what are these changes? Gunslinger, Way of the Sharpshooter, Bottom Path. Traditionally, Way of the Sharpshooter has mostly been used in specific PvE activities and almost exclusively paired with the Celestial Nighthawk Helm. We wanted to move Way of the Sharpshooter to be something players wanted to choose more often for a wider range of activities. To do that, we need to differentiate differ, differentiate differ, both Golden Gun paths to make Sharpshooter more versatile and interesting to use in PvE. In order to differentiate the three shot and the six shot golden gun and better play into their fantasies, we've made the following changes. So first things first, before we get into the changes, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having a class that is that class. I need to do a lot of damage here and now, here's Celestial Nighthawk golden gun, done. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what a class is, that's what they do. They fill a role. They are part of a class. I mean, look at Helm of Saint-14 Weapons of Light Defender Bubble Titans. That's their class. That's what they do. In fact, we needed Defender Bubble buffed and Well of Radiance kind of nerfed because they were stepping on each other's toes, as there was no reason to use the bubble when you had Well of Radiance. So I don't like seeing this mentality that we're an RPG MMO, but like, we noticed that you guys are doing one specific thing with one specific role, you're using only Celestial Nighthawk in PvE, and that couldn't possibly have anything to do with it being one of the best damage-dealing exotics in PvE, but hey, fucking details. Now, the reason I'm pointing this mentality out is because it's actually not a great one. Now, Hunters got lucky here, but if you look at all the changes, these are changes that are great in PvP, not necessarily going to change the tides of battle in PvE, or stop people from using Celestial Nighthawk. But if you look at, say, something like Titan Bubble, this is the same mentality that got it nerfed in the first place. This mentality that Bungie needs to change the way that a class plays, solely based on the fact that it's being played one very specific way. There's nothing wrong with having PvE-only classes or PvE-only weapons that do one thing very well in PvE, and that's basically all they do. There's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, we should have more of that. We're an RPG. This is an RPG. We're playing an RPG MMO type thing. Classes get very specific. In fact, I thought that was the entire point of dumbing down the class trees. But anyways, back to the changes. So, for three shot golden gun, they increase the auto aim distance and reliability when aiming down sights, as it fulfills the role of long range accuracy. For six shot, we shorten the damage fall off range to emphasize the short range gunfighter role with a lot of kill potential. While it can still perform at ranges, it may take an extra shot to get the job done. We've made other changes to Way of the Outlaw to help keep its potency like adding new explosive proc knives that can be stuck to surfaces and detonate when enemies pass nearby. All up, we want Way of the Sharpshooter to feel more active and rewarding for players, who can fulfill a role as the Sharpshooter by taking down enemies with accuracy and precision. New, Weighted Knife, High damage knife throw with a long windup. Travels at high speeds, bounces once, does extra damage to the head. Precision shot final blows recharge the melee completely. One hit precision blows in PvP. Practice makes perfect. QOL. Lasts longer, but. Gives a bit less energy per second. Precision hits grant two stacks. Knock them down. Precision final blows increase weapon stability and ADS speed. Timer starts at 10 seconds, but any additional final blows slash assists can increase that up to 25 seconds. Casting your super with this above 20 seconds consumes the buff and grants extra damage. Does not stack with Celestial Nighthawk. Line them up. Old perks from Crowdpleaser are now part of this perk. 
Golden Gun can cause precision damage, and precision shots generate orbs of light. First things first, I know I was celebrating these changes, but I want to go look at Knock Em Down. Because Knock Em Down is fucking stupid, but not in the way that you think I'm going to bitch about it unless you know me, and you know I like Celestial Nighthawk. So, one of the common arguments that you always hear about Destiny, it's in comment sections, it's on Twitter, it's on Reddit and the Bungie forums, is Joker! PvP needs to go! It ruins PvE! Well, clearly not, and clearly, Bungie cares about damage scaling in PvE. I mean, here you have this perk, knock them down. And you have to get three precision hit kills, within a couple of seconds of each other to stack the buff up to 25, and then you have to go into super before it counts down to 20 to get extra damage. That's kind of a cool perk. I like that perk. But it doesn't stack with Nighthawk? Why? It's probably because, if I had to guess why, under the right circumstances, Celestial Nighthawk can already do a couple of million worth of damage. But besides that main one what the fuck moment, there's really only one other problem that I have with these changes, and it's adding more aim assist to a super. Aim assist, generally speaking, equals bullet magnetism. Bullet magnetism, in a game with peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking, without connection-based matchmaking, where it's all fucking true skill, except one playlist, well, that means you're getting shot around corners. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Every bullet in this game is basically playing on wanted rules. It's why not having the choice to be able to choose between skill-based matchmaking and connection-based matchmaking is fucking terrible. But hey, fucking details. Another thing that I'm kind of perplexed about is why didn't we see any changes to the Hunter Trip Mine? Yes, Hunter's got a new OHK throwing knife, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but Trip Mine is kind of worthless in its current state. I mean, even if they just left it the way it was and buffed young Ahamkara's spine so that it had two Trip Mine grenades, well, then maybe you'd have something, but they didn't even touch it? Really? And then, of course, we come to the throwing knife. Now, I've had a lot of people, like, pestering me about this, really wanting to know my opinion about it because I like shoulder charge, and they're, like, trying to use what I think about this as a gotcha to shoulder charge. Like, oh, Joker, you're just a hypocrite, blah, 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 blah. But I've always said that hunters needed an OHK throwing knife. That's a good change to see. What I'm not sure how I feel about is the knife refunding itself intrinsically on kill. Even if they just changed it to where you had to walk over and pick the knife up after you got a kill or after you threw it, I think that would be better. Because no class has a refundable OHK ability that refunds itself off of itself. This requires an exotic. That's an exotic perk being baked into a basic hunter melee. Now, some of you might be thinking, But Joker, you have to get a crit kill. Yeah, but it's an OHK crit kill, and I played Hunter in Destiny 1. And I played Hunter in Destiny 2. And throwing a knife and hitting somebody in the forehead with a knife isn't that hard. And hey, if they wanted to tie that ability to an exotic, I'd be all for it. But looking at it on paper right now, this might be a little bit of an overbuff. That said, and I know that there's a lot of hunters that didn't make it to this that said part, a lot of this depends on the aim assist, the magnetism, and the throw speed of the knife. If they're like D1 knives only in OHK, then that's going to be a problem. More so if we get a Solar Coil mod, which would just be Thunder Coil for Solar Classes, which would potentially break the Titan Throwing Hammer and make that overpowered as well. So a lot of it hinges on execution, but I don't want any hunters in the comments saying, Oh, you did No. Being a hunter, jumping straight up in the air, looking down and throwing a knife at somebody for an OH kill, that's going to be super easy. You and I both know it. But I want to reiterate, these are a lot of really good changes, and I'm actually excited that Hunter's got an OHK throwing knife. I just think it's a little too buffed, especially because it doesn't have an exotic requirement. But moving forward. So, we have the changes to Code of the Devastator. Bungie writes, Titans who adhere to the Code of the Devastator want nothing more than to crush their foes with smoldering hammers. And we want to see them live out their dreams. When our data indicated that this subclass was underperforming in PvP, we decided to make a few changes that should enable it to be more competitive. The Roaring Flame perk has received a significant buff to its bonus damage, and the buff now lasts 25% longer, making it easier to build and retain stacks between encounters. The base damage of the Throwing Hammer melee ability has increased. It's now very lethal in PvP while you have Roaring Flames active. In addition, once you've thrown the hammer and it's lying on the ground, you don't have to get quite as close to pick it up. Finally, we've tuned the super in a number of ways. 
For starters, Burning Maul now lasts longer, giving you more time to use it strategically instead of just spamming the spin button. We also increased the height of the Heavy Slam Explosion, so this super should feel more potent against airborne enemies. That's the gist of it, but here are more details. Basically, throwing hammer damage went from 100 to 120, pickup radius went from 2 meters to 3.5 meters, and they adjusted the hammer throwing animation to fit the more damaging attack. Roaring Flames increased the damage bonus from 10% per stack to 25% per stack in PvP, and increased the duration from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Burning Maul increased the duration from 21.2 seconds to 28.5 seconds. Light Attack reduced the light attack energy cost from 5% to 3%. They also changed the animation so that it now flows seamlessly into chained light attacks without stopping. Heavy Attack Ground Slam Attack now detonates when it detects enemies above it. Detonation radius was increased to make landing attacks more consistent. Increased energy cost from 6% to 8%. So unfortunately, this is one of those buffs where we just need to see more before we have an idea of whether it's good or bad. But again, Bungie started this segment off going, well, this isn't good in PvP. Well, who gives a fuck? Like, no, literally, who gives a flying fuck? You know what this class's job should be? It should be able to stand at the feet of an enemy and use spin to win or ground pound to just devastate it. Instead of, you know, getting stomped by a boss like every boss does, even the ones that don't have feet, and flying across the map to fall off a ledge or hit a wall and dying to collision damage. Like I said, I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with a class being PvE focused. Just make it its best version of that. So I like these changes, and I do think that you're going to see a couple more burning malls, but I also think that we're going to see a huge decline in titans once One-Eyed Mask gets nerfed, more so after Dawnblade Attunement of the Sky gets its buff. Because, wow. It took an already good class that just had a really high skill ceiling and just made it way better than it already was. And you know what, in my opinion, it kind of brought that skill ceiling down, which could be a good or could be a bad thing, only time will tell. But damn, this thing is gonna be good. This thing is meta. This will be the meta now. So what did Bungie do to elevate Dawnblade Attunement of the Sky to be a meta threat? With Attunement of the Sky, we wanted to push its air superiority gameplay further. When we initially released this path, its movement capabilities were tuned around the original Destiny 2 gameplay experience, which was much slower and more deliberate without positioning. However, over time, this movement needed to be adapted to the new sandbox. We wanted to give you the gameplay experience the fantasy begs for, a flying angel who can maneuver with grace and destroy its foes below. Now, before we got started, I wanted to touch on one thing. To accomplish our goals of reworking the air superiority role, we needed to differentiate the two daybreak paths from one another. As such, we reduced the speed at which Burst Glide accelerates players in daybreak. We know that this is a controversial change, but we wanted to reserve the air superiority gameplay with Attunement of the Sky, and the Burst Glide speed was blurring the lines between both daybreak paths. Icarus Dash's while in daybreak have increased speed and thrust to recapture the Burst Glide gameplay for those running the air superiority path. We hope that, while this change is different, you still feel as fast as before, but with maybe a bit more expression behind that speed. The rest of the changes are below. New Celestial Fire Melee. Send a spiral of three explosive solar projectiles. Heat Rises. Consume your grenade to extend glide time and dramatically reduce the in-air accuracy penalties for weapons. Winged Sun. Fire weapons using Celestial Fire and throw grenades while gliding. Airborne Final Blows grants melee energy and extends the duration of Heat Rises. Icarus Dash Rework. Tap Crouch twice to dodge in mid-air. Dodging in Daybreak accelerates players further and costs less super energy while under the effects of Heat Rises. Added note, due to the nature of these reworks, Wings of Sacred Dawn received a buff where it gains 15% damage resistance while Tome of Dawn is active. So, there is a ton of synergy with this class, everything is feeding into everything else, and that's how a class should play. But I'm wondering what that Celestial Fire melee is going to look like, because it sounds like handheld supernova with less steps. Then you have the Wings of Sacred Dawn, giving a 15% damage resistance buff. That's really cool. That makes that exotic viable. I think one of the main reasons that we're going to see this class played a lot more is because it sort of neutralizes the in-air accuracy penalties that you receive when you jump. Then it feeds into itself with Icarus Dash, so 
If you jump up and you're trying to take advantage of not having any in-air accuracy penalties, and then somebody starts shooting at you, you can just dodge out of the way. It's like hunters, only in the air. Then you have that 15% damage reduction from Wings of Sacred Dawn. How's that gonna play with the super? So there's a lot of really cool things here that are either gonna push this class into godhood in the meta, or it's not gonna be enough to really make a difference. But I think it's going to be good changes not pointless ones, or at least I hope, because you know what? This class deserves something. And I think a lot of people are gonna migrate to this class, especially after the One-Eyed Mask nerf, because we only have a lot of people playing Titans statistically, like you can go in and look at the data, because of One-Eyed Mask, because of the Bottom Tree Striker buff. So once both those things are gone, people are gonna be looking for a new class to play, and I think they're gonna be playing Warlock. Either that or go back to Hunter. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about these buffs. I think that they should have looked at more of the solar subclasses. And you know what? Maybe they did and they just couldn't think of anything to do with them. But I really wish that the other subclasses got something as well. And I do hope that some of the solar subclass exotics or some of the neutral class exotics get a rework as well. But hopefully we'll see that when the next season, Season of the Dawn, gets their patch notes. But hey, like I said, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. And like always, stay frosty.